Welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. It's so good that you've joined us today. I have something I want to share with you. In 2021, I went to Heimbuch in Wisconsin and had a great visit to learn more about this technology that's in front of us today. That being said, we're standing right now. We know Heimbuch is a fantastic German product. We've talked about the quality, the flexibility, the precision. Yes. We know we're standing in a 16,000 square foot building right now with the growth potential to do yes. so much. And you've been in this building from about 2012 and continually mm -hmm. are growing here in Heimbuch, USA. And guess what happened after that? I heard great test customer testimonials from VAC Motorsports, my friend Tony Saloum. Since we love Heimbuch, but there's so many customer... Wait, what's it? Uh, Who's this? <laughs> so you want to talk flexibility, let's talk flexibility, all right? So here's the thing. I made the biggest mistake of my life and my business when I didn't go to Hainbook sooner. Hainbook, Hainbook made all the difference. And I, I got to tell you, I have the old system. You know what I dream about at night? I dream about this. One day I'm going to have it. Then I headed over to Silencer Co. and had to shoot guns over there, which is cool. Silencers contain a lot of tubes, a lot of serial numbers. So if you look behind us, you know, right now we've got an automated solution, but we didn't always have that. One of the things that we struggled with was an ID mandrel, uh, the consistency. We, we weren't getting a great grip. We were breaking them. So we, we went to the drawing board and said, hey, what can we do to solve this problem so that we can then automate? And we came up with the ID mandrel from uh, Heimbook, and we brought it in after you know, trying a few other things, and it was perfect. Every time perfect. And that created a repeatable process, which you can then automate. So I got to learn a little bit about that as well. But the customers love the product so much. The sales guys believe in the product so much. I had to fly over to Germany as well to find out for myself how this was being made. I'm in Germany today at the birthplace of the clamping head. Heimbuch started in 1951, the invention of the clamping head in 1977, with 25 year patent where no one else could make this product. This is where it was all created, started, launched, and growing. So today, I actually have Jim on camera, and we're gonna talk about the technical side of things, how from the inside out these actually work. Not the sales pitch side, but the technical side. Jim, thank you so much for joining me today. Because I've been all over the world with you guys, I am truly curious to learn more and we're at the SHOT Show, so we can spin it a little bit and talk directly to those guys as well. But first, what makes you guys different? What sets you apart? And what are the technical attributes that allow your customers to succeed so often? Well, I think our, our main base is that we, we try for a strong foundation, like building a house or anything else. And our strong foundation is built on our collet chucks, um, which can be adapted over into a hydraulic actuation. Uh, but, you know, we want to take it one step further from there because anybody who wants a college chuck is going to, in the future, want something more. So our big, our big emphasis was on adaptations so that we can consistently locate different types of work holding onto that home landscape or that home base that we can um, build off of. So. You know, consistency is so very important. And back when I was machining around 2002, we used to use brass collars, Jim, if you can believe that. And every time I'd run a part, it'd be different from the part before it. And what I understand about your product is it is consistent, but not only consistent, reliable in the way of really having the rigidity that people need. Yeah, and the ruggedness. You know, I, I thought about this a little bit on a, on a flight down here, and I'm from Wisconsin, and I've... Uh, I've spent a good 45, 50 years up in a tree hunting. Um, and the last thing you want to do is not be able to rely on your equipment. And it, it struck me that, you know, everybody here is looking for the same thing. They're looking for something that they can hold in their hand and feel the quality and have a good rugged base because, you know, if you're in a hunting situation or any other type of shooting situation, when that moment of truth comes, you want to be ready for it. And the last thing you want to do is doubt what you're holding in your hand. That's a long time in a tree. Long time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Young and amazing. All right, so I want to get into the technical as well and continue with that because I think it is important to understand the differences that we, we when we invest in a product, if we look from the outside, we go, well, they all look kind of the same, but on the inside, they're most definitely not. I believe there's a ring on the inside that allows you to have different t uh, capabilities. Could you expand on how that works? I know that's kind of the secret sauce. Uh, it is. It's, it's our secret sauce that we use for um, any sort of quick change. I mean, we can make quick change systems that 
locate an entire chuck on a machine. We could do quick change down to a, a fixture level by using that same concept. And the concept is having a vulcanized system such as this that we use in every different diameter with a mating surface that actually forms itself to that cone. Uh, the cone allows it to self-center itself. We can uh, use that system, whether it be in a, a quick change for a chuck or a quick change for a, a mando or anything else. That same system we implemented into a hexagon design instead of a round to uh, get a little bit more transferable torque out of our system. Um, but you get the same amount of accuracy, the same amount of concentricity. Uh, we use that for virtually all of our quick change systems. Some of the limitations to a collet chuck, people, you know, they might want, we have a five inch or a six inch diameter piece that we run maybe twice a year, but we don't feel like pulling the chuck off. So we have that same quick locating consistent system, be able to transfer from a roughly two inch clamping diameter into like a six inch clamping diameter. And it's quick and it's repeatable. It's within microns, you don't have to dial things in, you don't have to bore out jaws every time you want to do stuff like that. Um, so we try to use that as, again, that base foundation of quality at the base, and then you can build up from it. And how does that translate for you folks out there? Well, think about this. If you can repeat something over and over again, if it's rugged enough to survive some of the machinists as well, and it's also going to be quick enough to switch in and out when new jobs come in, overall, you're able to produce more parts that are reliable with less scrap, make more money, become more effective, and that's kind of the idea of what this is all about anyway, right? And like I said earlier, you know, you spend time in the outdoors, it's rugged environments, there's a lot of conditions that you know, aren't optimal by any means. Um, it's the same thing with any of the guns or in a machining sense. You have chips blasting in there, you have coolants blasting in there, you have high RPMs, you have bad material, you have all the variables. But if you start out with something rugged and consistent, it'll carry you through those problems. I like that explanation. Now I want to focus completely on the fact that we're a SHOT Show today. We're a SHOT Show today! We're all excited about that. A lot of folks can't make it, but we're going to bring SHOT Show to you as well. Something I'm noticing right here, Jim, and I already know about Heimbook, is you guys are the world leaders when it comes to round bar, but you also do all sorts of unique angles if people need to and, and geometries. But I'm seeing some gang tooling here, which I hadn't seen before, to set up on a machine to make quick change for that that as well. So let's specifically talk about how in the gun industry, how in the hunting industry, Heimbook can help those customers. Yeah, and it comes down to basically two different types of work holding. Um, our biggest work holding here is, you know, obviously the barrels, everybody needs one per gun. Um, if you walk around the SHOT Show here, you can see so many different manufacturers of them. But you also have the smaller components that people want that same reliability. And if you can have a consistent setup that people can switch between parts and gang them like you pointed out onto a vertical machining center, horizontal machining center with a tombstone, whatever it happens to be. Yes, that Hydrock is a hydraulically actuated um, device that takes our same adaptations, obviously in a bigger size, but on the larger sizes, you could put a clamping head in there, you could put a mando in there, you could put a, a jaw module in there, you could have all of that repeatable and quick changeover, but multiply it by four, six, eight, however many you want to put on your work holding. I've, cl I've clarified this before when we've done interviews with Heimbook, but I want to say it one more time in case this is the first time someone's watching. And Jim, it's great to have you on camera. Thank you for that. When we're looking at this, a lot of us think of uh, horizontal integration, but you guys are horizontal and vertical with the gang, all of that kind of stuff, right? And uh, again, you know, we make the same type of round chucks, bigger chucks, up to five, six, larger if they're you know if the customer needs a special we can custom design that well my friends this is my friend jim obviously this is heimbook america world leaders in work holding if you don't believe me even though jim hit all the technical notes silencer co told me to my face they were doing a job that they could not do without the heimbook product so check it out for yourself and see what we're all talking about